What is going on, FA Nation? John Pemba here with Howard Vander. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Playbook preview show. We got Friday here, Howard. We have 12 games on the main slate. We have a couple of pitchers coming off the IL. We have one pitcher making his season debut, and we have Coors Field on the slate with a, a bit more of an enticing team in Coors this go around. The Texas Rangers making their way into Colorado as the Giants exit. Uh, all of that with a three pitchers over $10,000 to talk about. It's a big slate. You got to love it. It's a big slate. You got to love it. And, you know, and as we're recording and the Rockies are just pounding the Giants in Coors Field, it makes it even more enticing, especially when you, uh, you know, you, you look at this matchup and, and the way it's going to end up uh, with uh, some absolutely delicious, delicious uh Bats going up against Austin Gomber. I, I I know you. We love our lefties, but still. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Appreciate that. Hit that like and subscribe button. That makes it uh, all the more worthwhile for us. But yeah, John, I said I can tell you, man. I just want to like sink my teeth into this. We, you know, this is a nice meaty slate. It's going to be tough with the core's exposure, but let's get to it. What do you got? Get. Yeah to it indeed mentioned three pitchers up over 10k tyler glass now ranger suarez looking like one of the best pitchers in baseball out of nowhere and joe ryan your three guys up over ten thousand dollars you say kikuchi and tanner hauk are in that 9k tier if you want to talk about the top five um really hard to do worse uh than the three guys you got up there um, it is very hard to to do worse. I mean, obviously Suarez has got the the best matchup, and I think you know we obviously want to lean into that. You know, I'll tell you what, San Diego surprisingly good against you know against uh, against the pitching here. So I you know listen, I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna say no to Glass now, but I'd rather just you know save six hundred dollars and go to Suarez because I just think it's a it's a just a, a much better matchup a softer matchup for us. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've talked about obviously this year the uh the Miami Marlins in their their lineup uh, you know struggling. Yes, they got Jake Berger back. I mean, that's more of a power bat uh than anything I think you'll, you're like too concerned about there when you're looking at their numbers uh this season just against left-handed pitching. It's also um, you know, it's also the mental culture there as well. You know, sure. when they they traded Luis Arise, there's talk now about Jazz Chisholm possibly being on the move. They have other components that they could be selling off, even like a like a Brian De La Cruz or something like that. So sure. it's it's in the culture right now that this is a team that's about to be you know sliced and diced. Sure, so, for sure. So that kind of makes it a little bit more enticing there for me uh, as well, but. Joe Ryan, I like that matchup too against Toronto. Toronto, like we talked about that. Here's another team that could get sliced and diced. Mm -hmm. Big losing culture over here as well. Minnesota keeps on winning uh, also. You know, that's a team that's picked up their winning streak um, here. Yeah, Kikuchi on the other side of that matchup. Uh, we know, uh, again, Minnesota is also a big strikeout team. Against lefties this year, though, they are actually hammering the baseball. 347 Woba. Uh, against left-handed pitching this year for Minnesota. So that could end up being a little bit of a tougher spot. Uh, Tanner Houck has been good for the majority of the season. Again, ran into a little trouble against that hot Minnesota team. We do talk a lot about Washington and the fact that they don't really strike out a ton, um, but they also don't hit the ball all that well uh, either. You know, they're, they're not a, a threatful offense, at least yet. They obviously have some talent down in the minor leagues, but, um, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to shy away from Tanner Houck either, but, Howard, there's more, I think, in the mid-tier uh, that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, notably, I, I think Brian Wu is in a, in a really good spot. I know you, at times you're a bit cagey on guys coming off of the IL. Um, Brian Wu, three AAA outings this year, 11 shutout innings, 17 strikeouts, no walks uh, in that. Now he's got Oakland here at home. Uh, I, I like the AK price tag for this kid. I mean, I like the pitcher a lot, but yeah, I'm definitely I'm gun shy when it comes to it. I don't know how many how many pitches did he throw, you know, in uh, in each of those AAA outings. You know, where where are they going to you know get his pitch count up? Um, and and I'll tell you what, as as much of a pushover team as we've seen with Oakland, I mean, I just saw him pop nine runs up on the on the the Rangers. Uh, mm -hmm. In the first game of the doubleheader, I saw him put up a 20 spot, you know, sure. uh, a, a week before. So, you know, it's not really a pushover team if they can get to Brian Wu and get his pitch count up. 
that's kind of troublesome there. Not to mention Blackburn on the other side of that game. Mm -hmm. Good pitcher going up against a team that's just getting struck, you know, punched out on the regular. Yeah. Still the highest strikeout rate in baseball, Seattle against righties, 29.1%. Oakland clocking in fourth highest strikeout rate, 25.7%. So could be a lot of strikeouts. Uh, I know underdog and sometimes prize picks will do the uh, combined strikeout prop for the two pitchers in a game. Uh, maybe uh, we take a peek at that for uh, tomorrow's uh, Dude, prize are, picks and underdog. Are you, are you ready for this? Are you yeah. ready? I just want you to, I just it. want you to hear this. Yeah. All right. Over the last seven days, all right, uh, 389 Woba, yep, 280 batting average, 244 isolated power mark, an 18.4 strikeout percent strikeout rate, an 11.5 percent walk rate, 14 home runs, 53 RBI. Yeah, John, that is your Oakland Athletics. Yeah, uh, to me, it feels like they're peaking, Howard. Uh, there, there's got to be uh, peaking around the corner, gonna be like, I'm gonna smack this pitcher yeah, around. Yeah, there's that, or they're about to, you know, the roller coaster <laughs> hits the top of the mountain, right? And then all of a sudden, Brent Rooker goes up the bat with a wet noodle, you know, because you know, he's, he's he's not gonna be hitting 40 home runs this year. So, um, there's that. I like that. I also like uh, Logan Webb. I, I understand that he has hurt us mm-hmm. more recently. Mm -hmm. Um, those are on the road in Boston, in Philly. Now he's back home where he's nice and comfortable, you know, uh, three home starts this year, 082 ERA, 508 starts, 592 ERA. There's obviously the bigger ballpark, um, here. And then you want to talk, I'm not a strikeout pitcher, big time ground ball guy, but against right-handed pitching this year, uh, the Cincinnati Reds are now your second highest strikeout rate at 28 0.2% 0.2% here, 288 Woba, 208 batting average against right-handed pitching. So uh, I don't mind some Logan Webb here at home against the Reds. No, and I mean, well, they got TJ Friedel back, which adds like a, a nice little leadoff option for Cincinnati. They also lost Christian Encarnacion Strand. So you're missing power in the middle of that lineup. You look at that lineup and it's like, you know, the opening of the movie Major League. You're like Mitchell Friedman? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... So I, you know, I, I definitely like the move here against Cincinnati. It's also in San Francisco, yeah. which is a beautiful ballpark for uh, for for that as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm I like that as well. I think uh, I think Logan Webb is uh, is definitely in a great spot there. Um, further down, yeah, like I said, I hit you with uh, with Blackburn yep. against Seattle. I like that. Um, I don't necessarily know if I have any real reason to. Go otherwise. I don't mind Andrew Abbott maybe against San Francisco if you don't want to go the Logan Webb route. If you think Logan Webb has something wrong with him, uh, you know I do think that that's a good matchup for Abbott. And again, the ballpark certainly helps. Sure, um, I popped out uh, Cole Irvin. He is not a lot of earned run now uh, in twenty innings. So strikeouts aren't great, obviously. If you look at the sabermetric numbers, there's certainly some potential regression due here. Arizona, uh, that John, offense has been a bit up and down. John yeah. against left-handed pitching. I know. Arizona, 377 Woba. That leads the major league. I know. Kettle Marte, Christian Walker, Lourdes Goriel. Zero interest in Cole. I'm Irvin. just calling out recent form here. No, don't do that. Don't you, 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 you know, you gotta, you, you, you can't bury the lead. You know, yeah, recent form has been, you know, rock solid, but do you really want to trust Cole Irvin? If we didn't talk about a guy who's thrown 20 scoreless innings on the show, we wouldn't be doing our due diligence. Even if it's to say exactly what you're saying, Howard, that, you know, you might be, you might be uh, in a tough spot here in this matchup against Arizona. So, um, $2,300 <laughs> people are going to look at him given the, the current run there. Um, I also don't mind Charlie Morton here. Again, we, we haven't been big Mets guys um, this season. Morton's, you know, treaded water. Atlanta's offense certainly puts him in position to get some wins here. Um, you know, I, I, I don't mind taking a stab at Morton in this one either. Yeah, I don't mind taking a stab at Morton at, at this point either. I'm okay with that. I got I'm okay with that. Though. But again, I'm probably going to be living in the, you know, if, if I'm going to go Ranger Suarez, if I'm going to pay up, I'm paying up for Ranger Suarez. Uh, if I'm, you know, looking to save some money, I'm going to pair up, uh, Logan Webb and Blackburn. Blackburn's going to be locked in for me against Seattle. Okay. I'm checking out this Robert, uh, Gasser kid. They called up from triple A's 5k for the Brewers at home against the, uh, the Cardinals here. Bobby Gasser. He yeah. Me- 
Do you know? Do you know much no, about I him? Know, you, I, I don't know anything type? about Bobby Gas. So he's a top hundred prospect, ninety eight okay. coming into the year by Baseball America. Not off to a good start. He's actually made three appearances uh, at AAA this year. Uh, seven earned in twelve innings. Does have seventeen strikeouts. Um, much better last season for them. Um, three ninety four overall ERA, one hundred seventy two Ks over one thirty seven. 5k pitcher top 100 prospect cardinals yeah would you would you give him a look on a 12 gamer um i think i would if you know what i mean listen if i was doing like uh i don't know like a single entry large field gpp sure right you drop in him i mean st louis their numbers against left-handed pitching uh has been absolutely atrocious for 5k i mean that's 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 nuts, right? Put him and put put Gasser and let's build our lineup with Gasser and Blackburn as our two pitchers. Oh boy! Uh, just to call out your St. Louis commentary, there two sixty three weighted on base. That is second. Uh, sorry, the third lowest in baseball. One eighty seven batting average against lefties is dead last in, in the major leagues here. So, you know, again, kid didn't pitch too well at AAA, obviously, but he's getting the call up here at home. Against a bad team, top 100 prospect there uh, at 5K. I definitely don't mind it. Uh, moving on over to catcher. It'll be a quick spot here. We, we pick the cheapest catcher in the best spot, and we kind of roll with it. Um, what are some of your targets here? Um, hmm, well, if we're going to use Gasser, it's no longer Yvonne Herrera. Sure. At 3,100, so we're going to have to look a little. Uh, Connor Wong versus Patrick Corbin? What's that? Connor Wong versus Patrick Corbin. Of course, Connor. Well, how much is Connor Wong though? Thirty six hundred. Oh, that's it. Yeah, Patrick wow. Corbin. All right, Connor Wong. Wong it up, baby. I click the button. I think that's a lock. I think that's I think that's locked in. We'll put Gasser too. We'll run Gasser out there. We're, all right, we got two pitchers in. We'll see what we can afford as we work our way through this. Uh, first base. Yeah. What are you thinking here? What am I thinking here? Um, I mean, how do you not love Otani and Freeman uh, against Michael King? I mean, I know that what we've talked about Michael King could be, but let's talk about what Michael King is right now. And I can't say that there's anything special that Michael King is going to shut down the Dodgers lineup. So Otani and Freeman sit at the top for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll pass on the lefty on lefty crime with Harper against Trevor Rogers. Mm -hmm. I think I, I just have a hard time believing that trevor rogers actually sucks nowadays so hasn't um, been good get olsen versus quintana i know you're not a quintana guy but you know olsen's been still terrible naylor gets crochet crochet has been awful that's yeah. lefty lefty as well though um let's see where do we go next um, you know i would I, well i would definitely look at christian walker against cole irvin my friend I mean, come on, he's forty seven hundred dollars. I know we were paying five K for him for a while there. See, hey, let's take that discount there. You could also go with the lefty uh, Ryan O'Hearn uh, sure. against Brandon Fott on the other side if you wanted that game. Okay, I, I don't hate that. Um, Gomer's terrible. Nathaniel Lowe's pretty good. He's forty five hundred in cores, even yeah, lefty, lefty 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 lefty. For how long will it be lefty lefty? You know, actually, Gomber isn't the worst in the world here. He's he's actually I've seen Gomber go six seven innings in cores and and handle it. So I don't hate Gomber see, so much. Let's see the Nathaniel Low splits. I feel like a couple of years ago he actually handled lefties fairly well. First left handed pitching. So this year, okay, so good memory me. Uh, this year he's hitting three twenty one. Two years ago when he had his breakout season, he hit three thirty versus lefties. Um, the year before that, 277. So he doesn't have too many troubles against left-handed uh, pitching there, does Nathaniel Lowe. He, uh, he holds his own. Um, not a lot of power against lefties, but he does have an 817 OPS this year, 370 Woba. Two years ago during his breakout year, 398 Woba against left-handed pitching. So, it's so, you, so you, 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 that's you, that's your core's exposure. Uh, well, no, I think Walker's still probably a guy that I would go to here, but I'm just mentioning that low uh, on the lefty lefty isn't terrible. I like the fought call out as well. Um, you know, Lance Lynn's always primed to give up home runs. Uh, yep. You know, I, I don't know if Reese is necessarily the the, the target, but um, you know, he's there in the middle of that lineup. Uh, are you? I mean, are you buying into Oakland? I mean, Abraham Toro at thirty six hundred dollars is is going to hit. I mean. If I wanted to, if I wanted to save some money at second base, I would. But I mean, definitely, it's it's not. 
you know, again, we talk about this first base just happens to be a position. I hate paying down at. I agree. So that's, that's fair. Um, all right, let's move on over then to second base. Uh, again, I'm I'm talking... Yep. What? What? <laughs> what? what happened? I said, Marcus Simeon. Oh uh, yeah. Simeon against Gomber. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I mean, we got him all, We got the whole, the whole matchup, right? Simeon Gomber. Albies lefty, Marte lefty. So, Oof. all right. Yeah. You can only Which play way one. Where do you go? You can only play one. You can only play one. That is true. So, where would you go? I mean, we could we could do a, a Diamondback stack here with uh, you know, with with Walker. Um, I listen. I don't have a, a displeasure for any of them. I think they're all great plays. If you want to get Coors exposure and you have the money to spend up, you lock in Simeon. Albies against the lefty, we do like. I think Quintana has had better games. I, I, I'm very curious to see what the BVP is between Albies and, and Quintana. But, you know, he's he's been a pitcher that I've seen kind of, you know, shut down a good lineup every remote sure. once in a while. Sure. Um, um, yeah, and I agree with you. I think, I think it's going to be interesting, you know, the, we know Texas probably the chalk here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you end up getting a – you know, a Marte or an Albi is at a discount on ownership then, and they go off and, you know, Simeon doesn't have the big game, then you, you, you're certainly setting yourself in a better spot. Uh, Ozzy Albies though, you know, we're not BVP guys here, but if we were a BVP guys, <laughs> seven for 13, two doubles, two homers, 538 average, a 1700 OPS of Jose Quintana. There, so. <laughs> Those are those are good to quite good numbers. <laughs> wow, second base, nice and lush. Like the ownership's going to be huge on yeah. that one. Yeah, huge. Be... Just to see which one, which one we're getting out of the disc as a discount. I, I agree. Um, yeah, I like Jordan Westberg, but you don't need to go there, right? At forty nine hundred, with you're gonna, if you're going to spend forty nine, you might as well spend fifty one or fifty two. Um, yeah. That's kind of how I'm looking at it there. Mm -hmm. um, in the value tier, they bump Massey's price up. Tear tear drops on my eyes, but you know at 4K, <laughs> uh, still willing. Griffin Canning, I, I don't think much of here. So if you wanted to not spend up at this position for whatever that reason may be, um, Massey to me I, I think is fine. Um, after that, I don't know. I don't know if there'd be much else I'd go to. Yeah, I mean, you you could say I'm gonna get a, a slice of cores at a discount with a 3400 Brendan Rogers, but Brendan Rogers sucks. Yeah, he's better against lefties. So not really the, the key spot there. I don't think they'll do this again, but they actually had Jorge Mateo hit six the other day. I don't you know if he's hitting six again. I, I guess maybe, but okay. Uh, Bon Grissom against Corbin Carroll, 2800. There's there's your there's your spend. Patrick Corbin. Corbin Cap Patrick Corbin, yeah. Patrick Corbin. Uh, we look at we look at too many names at times. Uh, yeah, Von Grissom against Patrick Corbin is is a uh, is your spend down for me. Oh, that's Not a great spend down. Twenty eight hundred, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. it. Great call. Uh, third base position here. Uh, yeah, Bohm versus lefty at fifty five. Mm -hmm. Ramirez against Crochet at fifty nine. Riley against Quintana at fifty three. McMahon gives your cores exposure. He's having a good game today against Keaton Wynn. Fifty two hundred dollars. Got a favorite of the group? Um, yeah, you know, probably Alec Baum is is you know my favorite out of them all. I think that you know, I just you know, Trevor Rogers definitely is a, a struggling pitcher, not really regaining the form that I want. And Baum has just been he's just been fantastic. Now, I mean, I I didn't see what he did in uh, in yesterday's game. Um, okay, so he did get a hit. So he lost his 18 game hit streak. Yeah. Like in that last game against the Giants, but he, you know, he comes right back and he, uh, and he gets a base hit. Uh, he's he's just so dialed in right now, right? Like he's just he's just very very locked in. Sees the ball well to, against a soft lefty. I think it's fine there. I mean, listen, Jose Ramirez, Austin Riley, yeah, whoever's gonna fit your build the best. You know, I look at this like I look at second base. Sure. You know, am I stacking with a, a particular group? And is this guy good for that stack? And, you know, if that's the case, then that's kind of the way I would lean. But, yeah, I don't have a, a deep, dark preference over any of the three. Yeah. Boom, 651 slug, 256 isolated power against lefties. 
this year. We also can't spend up at every position. Um, we're going to have outfielders that we're going to want some exposure to on this slate. So mm. uh, we kind of work our way down into the mid tier here. Okay. Um, you know, Chapman versus Abbott's 47. They they are slowly dropping Michael Garcia's price a little bit against Canning. Um, Willie Castro switch hitter gets Kikuchi at 39. What's uh, what's Castro's numbers against lefties? That's a good point. Let's see. Willie Castro. Let's see what his splits are here because he's been hot lately. Um, splits this year. Oh, hey, Eugenio Suarez against Cole Irvin is part of that stack. Yeah, 30, 39 is a good price. It's a good price. All right. So this year, okay. Uh, this year against left handed pitching, uh, Willie Castro is hitting 480. Oh, uh, is that it? He is 12 for 25 uh, against left handed pitching with a homer and four doubles. Uh, isolated power number of 280. So uh, seeing the ball very well against lefties. Seeing the ball very well against lefties. If right. you wanted to go some Willie Castro there. I definitely don't want to hate on that. Uh, Ezekiel Duran maybe in the lineup here at $3,300? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think Duran, you know, if, if you're if you're fishing down for the price tag there, yeah, probably the uh, – you know the the way to go. He's super cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, um, our boy Tyler Nevin has just cooled off, John. Well, yeah, he's just you, not as exciting as he you're, was. You ride the hot wave, and then and then he remembers he's Tyler Nevin. So uh, just like Brent Rooker last year, who you kind of comped him to, Rooker had thirty homers. He did, but like he had a month stretches of where he was, you know, a four A caliber player. So. That's why I think there's potential for uh, for Wu here, maybe to catch him, you know, just catch him on the downswing. Um, anybody else out here for you that you have uh, some interest in? No, not really. How'd your boy Adrianza do the other day? Let off with a double. See, he's twenty six hundred. Yeah, it's against Going the righty, against though. Alec Marsh. Yeah, if he's leading off, so he's been playing for Ren- Renifo, by the way. We uh we got a we got a comment on our uh, on our YouTube that we were mispronouncing his last name. We don't pronounce the G; it's Renifo. So, okay. apologies to the uh, to the pronunciation guy, the Renifo family. Yeah, out there. So, uh, anyhow, uh, Ed Adrianzo was uh, filling in for him. So we'll see who's in and out of the lineup there. In that case, but if he's leading off again, sure, maybe, maybe there's some appeal there. Twenty six hundred dollars. Um, well, I see Danny Mendick's name, so it's time to move to short. Time to move along. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sh- shortstop, you got Mookie Betts, Bobby Witt, Ellie De La Cruz, you know, Gunnar Henderson's at fifty eight, Seager and Cords at fifty seven. Yeah, I think we're playing a five K starting pitcher tonight because there's I haven't really seen another position I'm looking to spend down on yet here. No, not at all. Actually, not at all. I've been like clicking through and uh, and and grabbing players, uh, just seeing like you know who we seem to like the most for you know a build, so that we'll do it at the end again. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I want to spend up everywhere. <laughs> I mean, that's I guess that's sometimes the hazards with a twelve game slate too is that there are too many players. Yeah, uh, you know, for, so for me, Mookie and I, Mookie and Wit for me. Cincinnati's just they're in such a huge slump right now. I'll pass on Ellie against yeah. Webb, especially if we were considering using Webb. I am, yeah. I, I do like Abrams against Hauk, lefty righty matchup. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably go with like Gunnar Henderson here at fifty eight um, as my guy because he's just he's the cheapest of the to me, you know, to the to the must starts. Sure. Um, you know, Seager eventually will come around. He's had a little bit of a hot streak there. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, if it was against a righty, I'd use Seager too. Sure. Um, mid-tier range, we have Willie Adamas at home versus a righty. That was like the monster split for us last season. A soft righty at that too. Yeah, Lance Lynn. Definitely a guy prone to the long ball. So there's there's that from for Adamas there. Um, Carlos Correa gets the lefty and Kikuchi at 4K. Um Blaze Alexander, your boy, 3,600 against Cole Irvin. He's really cooled off. I don't even know if he's going to be in the lineup. Okay. Sad, I know. But I would love to see it, right? Give me give me Cattell Marte leading off with Blaze Alexander hitting second and Christian Walker batting third, and I'm here for it 100%. Unfortunately, you're not going to get that. 
We're not going to get that. Uh, Orlando Arcia has the opposite BVP that Ozzy Albies has against uh, Jose Quintana. <laughs> but he has hit lefties really well over the course of his career. Uh, so since we're not believers in BVP anyways, I'm going to ignore his 121 average and 33 at-bats. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to look at the price tag, $3,600. And he's coming off of a game where he homered. Uh, you know, if you wanted to spend down, Orlando Arcia is fine for me. Um Rafaela yeah. against oh Rafael's a lefty. Oh no, he's no, a righty. righty. And dude, he's heating up 350 over his last 10 games. Don't right? sleep on the prospect, man. Thirty one hundred dollars there. If you want to save, there you go. Yeah, he had power and speed in the minor leagues. You know, had a little bit of an adjustment period for the first month uh here, but now starting to come around, heat up, showing that power and speed. Uh, I am a Red Sox fan, but I'm not being a homer though. I'm just using my eyes, watching him play. Uh, so if he's in the lineup there, 3100, you certainly can do because Patrick Corbin, one of our favorite punching bags uh, to go to, and then you got NATO down here at 3K. We're going to use gas or so wins out for us there, uh, but NATO at 3K is fine as well. Yeah, I'm work. trying to see if there's anything else. Do you like um, Brian Rocchio here? Um, I mean, I don't mind Rokio. He's not really a guy that, you know, you're going to get a lot out of. You need like you need either a multi hit game or a steal from him okay. to kind of pair. I mean, listen, I don't I don't dislike him, but, you know, sure. Not my yeah. not my ideal. OK, let's go to outfield where, again, it's there's so many outfielders. Um, yeah. Ozuna has ridiculous BVP numbers against Quintana as well. Twelve hundred OPS. <laughs> Hitting like 450 against them. Uh, leads the league at homers as it is right now. He's $5,500. Um, I'm you surprised you didn't go to your boy Tyler O'Neill against Patrick Corbin right from the jump. Well, I'm looking at the BVP page for the for the Braves at the moment. That's why oh, I, wanted, okay. I wanted to call it out while I had it in front of me. But yeah, O'Neill, you have Adolis all right there as well at 61 and 6K, depending on your stack preferences. Um, both of those guys are, are certainly fine. Um, you can play anybody from Ozuna up is what I'll say. Um, you know, Kyle Schwarber this year is actually hitting lefties better than righties. Well, isn't that spectacular? Yeah. Just letting you know, just a little, little, Very little happy fun, for him. fun fact there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why Tyler uh, or Taylor Ward's $5,300. That feels a little too expensive for him. Um, not going to do Tatis versus Glass now. No steer versus Webb. Yeah. Yeah. Tay Oscar better against a lefty. Yeah. You got a bunch of lefty lefty matchups with Chisholm, Carroll, Conforto. Yeah. Yelich against Lynn, 5,400. Um, I do like that. Yelich hasn't really gotten started yet, right? Right? He's not hasn't heated up a little bit. Oh no, he did. He's coming off of oh no, no, no. This is his no, first. Yeah, game. he's only had the one game. Only had the one game back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, I would look at it. Yelich plays on uh on Thursday night. So yeah. I would see how Yelich does because I, I definitely would not mind that. He's got Sonny Gray tonight, so it wouldn't shock me if it doesn't go well for him, but Lance Lynn is not Sonny Gray. It's not so. just about like the, the actual result of the at bat as much as it is what is his at bat look like? Like, sure. I mean, is he is he hitting the ball hard? Or is he getting, you know, a good plate appearance? Sure. Because, you know, it's just it's gonna take a couple of swings to get that timing back. And when you are going up against Sonny Gray, obviously it's gonna be a lot more difficult. But if you look good doing it all, well. Then I can't argue against it. All righty. Uh, obviously, Texas will be in play here, even if the lefty lefty matchup. Um, Durant's at a lefty lefty. Don't really love that for him. Uh, where's the next? Where's the next guy? Kowser at 44. He's obviously cooled off a little bit, but you know, cooled off a like, lot. You like Baltimore against Fott. Um, yeah, Baltimore against Fott. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Kepler's a lefty. Larnich is a lefty. Yeah. I don't know why it's weird that Minnesota's hitting lefty so well because a lot of their guys are from the left side of the plate. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you could sneak in O'Hearn here in the outfield. We talked about him earlier. Yeah, Doyle Homer today. Uh, if you're not in on John Gray, 4,200. Yeah. Um, uh, there's your boy Brent Rooker. Cedric Mullins going up against Brandon Fott. I don't mind that. Sure, sure. Uh, Castellanos can't suck forever, right? He's forty one hundred. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe he can. Maybe he can. Uh, Blake Perkins, four K against Lance Lynn, coming down. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, slumping a little bit there, but he'll be in the lineup. Sure, 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 sure. Mm, where do we go next here? I don't know. Eloy against uh, Carrasco. 
Sure. We haven't talked many White Sox. Gavin Sheets is down there as well. Thirty four hundred dollars, maybe. Yeah. Or, yeah, there he is against Carrasco. Could do that. Uh, Duvall's thirty four against Quintana. He'll be in the lineup. Um, MJ Melendez against Griffin Canning at thirty six. Yeah, I would definitely. That. I would. I would look into that one. Sure. Um, if Leodes is in the lineup, he homered yesterday. Could get him against Gomber. There's not a lot though, man. This is kind of crazy. I expect there's not a lot of bargain outfielders. Yeah, I feel like I would have expected. A little... I think what's killing us too is a lot of these guys. We usually use lefty left against righties, and they're yeah, uh, and they're facing lefties today. Uh, Joe Adele, thirty three hundred dollars homered the other day. There you go. Uh, we got Grichik versus lefty. He's been terrible, but. <laughs> Mm. Ah, let's uh, let's build the lineup. We got we we. All right. we know you said you've been plugging around. What's your what's your SP one here? Oh, you got him in there. It's it's Robert Gasser. Yeah, but I mean he's he's just plugged in first. What's your what's your? Oh, oh yeah, give me Paul Blackburn against the uh, the Mariners. Okay, so we got a lot of money to play with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just try out. Uh, see if see if you can fit Christian Walker. Okay. Cattell Marte. All right, and let's uh, let's try and save a couple of bucks. Uh, your boy Willie Castro. I know how much you love him. He's good, five k. And let's uh, let's pair up Connor Wong with uh, with with Rafaela. That's just going to save us some more money there too. Fifty seven hundred for three outfielders. A dealer's choice here. Acuna, Ozuna, Yelich, and obviously you can play around here with. Uh, with Yelich and the money that you've got there, you could actually, uh, if you wanted to, you could pay down to one of the bargain outfielders from Yelich if he doesn't look good in his plate appearances uh, on Thursday, and uh, and and pay, you know, take the, you know, get a bargain, you know, a deeper outfielder who we talked about, uh, mm-hmm. and pay up at either Rafaela or uh, or Castro, depending on how far you pay down in the outfield, you could get one of those, you know. See if you can get yourself a Gunnar Henderson in there. Be two K, so sixty three and under. What was uh, what was Gunnar? Fifty eight. Be twenty five hundred dollar outfielder. Is there a twenty five hundred dollar outfielder we like? Um, Carlson versus lefty, but we're playing Gasser. But would you just do it anyways? No, you wouldn't have to. Could see, could see Jake Ave in the lineup against uh, Gray there. Um, doesn't seem like it. It could just it would, we may have to move some other things around, but all right, just just getting a feel for it. Yeah, you know? man, you know, could could make it work. We could uh, try try Rafaela at uh, at short and uh, and pay up on uh, on Castro. Uh, you know, from Willie Castro, who's the third baseman that we wanted up top. You mentioned Bohm, but we could also go another Brave if you wanted a three stack. Right, or you could go McMahon if you wanted to get your uh, your match up there sure. in cores. Uh, let's stick with the Braves. That would give us a thirty eight hundred dollar outfielder. Oh. Uh, again, kind of a gross, a gross spot here. Yeah, Profar is going to lead off against Glass now. Yeah, I don't want Glass now. <laughs> There's just not a lot of room to move. What's a uh, if we do wit $2,300 third baseman, is there a cheap, cheap guy down here? Joey Wendell. <laughs> All right. So you, we gave you, <laughs> we gave you some example lineups. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do with that. Let me, let me go back to what we had built there so we can show the, show the product to the, to the fans at home here. Third baseman, we had Castro, then Rafaela. Rafaela. That's short. And get yourself a little Christian Yelich or hey. below. So end. despite all the top spends, we are going the cheapest pitcher on the slate and then black now. Uh, Blackburn. <laughs> black now. Jesus. Blackburn. Um, with Wong, Walker, Marte, Casser, Rafaela, Acuna, Ozuna, and Yelich there for everybody. $400 left over. Uh, Howard and Henry will be live at 4 p.m. Eastern time to get you all ready for 
this main slate. Henry Wilson will have your playbook out nice and early. Make sure you get in the Discord, everybody. If you have any questions, find us in there. If you're not already a member of the Fantasy Alarm family, I don't know what you're waiting for. You can go ahead uh, and sign up today. QR code there on the screen. Use promo code Let's Go. Get a discount on your first month. Fantasyalarm.com slash win. We appreciate you all stopping in. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss a show. All right, I will catch you all later.